Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to Texas Farmstead Living. On today's video, I'm going to share with you what you need to know when buying a dairy cow. First of all, I want to share with you that 20 years ago or 20 plus years ago when I was buying a family milk cow, that it was probably one of the single most important things that changed my life. And it changed it for the better. I have always, uh, for all these years, remained enthusiastic about milking cows and taking care of them. And I have been wanting to make this video for years and I am so excited to share this information with you. I'm gonna share with you my 10 best tips for buying a dairy cow and they are not in any um, necessarily, you know, order of importance. The first tip is the breed of dairy animal. There are a lot of different breeds. There's Holstein, Brown Swiss, Guernsey, and of course my favorite is Jersey. Now I have a really good article. Uh, it's from Countryside Magazine and I can link it in the description box below about all the different dairy breeds and the pros and cons of each. Okay, so on the remainder nine tips, you know, I have only had Jersey uh, breed, and I actually had a raw milk dairy in 2012, 2013, 14, state of Texas grade A raw milk dairy, and I did uh, milk Jersey cows. So I do have quite a lot of things to tell you about Jerseys. Okay, the second tip and this is absolutely one of the most important things that you need to know and I talk about it I have a really good video about it it's kind of my area that I have studied intensely for a really long time I actually have so much research that it's sometimes more than some universities okay it is disease-free dairy cows. So the states usually uh, will make sure that, you know, you can find out if your state is TB and bangs free. Those, those are um, a status that your, your state will have. But there are many more zoonotic diseases that um, cattle have. And zoonotic means that they can transfer to humans. And where I believe that raw milk has done amazing things for my family, I still feel um, that you should be very informed about the health of your cow. I have, you know, so it's eight diseases that I test for. I have been doing so for 20 years. I have a closed herd. I have strict biosecurity at this farm because, and we don't allow any other animals um, of any kind to come and go. We have to raise our own chickens. Um, we are high gamed. So we've done the best that we can to keep out some of the uh, bovine diseases that are even spread from um, boots that people wore maybe to a cell barn. So that topic, go and take a deep dive in, in researching that. Okay, so topic number three is fertility. So jerseys are known for their early mature um, age of being able to breed. So, you know, that's to, to some a benefit. I actually do not like to breed our heifers until they're about two years old. 
Um, so if you're your cow, if you're buying a cow, you would want to have a confirmed pregnancy from a vet, I would say, because chances are you're probably going to be paying a lot for a Jersey cow. So you, that's important. And back to two and disease free, I always, if I were going to buy a dairy animal, I would run the set of tests that I recommend in the video. And I actually have a blog post about it. So I would definitely, I would not even let an animal, I wouldn't bring it home to my property because some diseases can last in your soil for years. And some of the mastitis superbugs that are highly evolved, once they're in your barnyard, you know, it'd just be better not to bring them to your farm. So you definitely want to, you know, address tip number two. Okay, tip number four is utter health. Now, mastitis is a common disease that dairy cows, you know, are plagued with. Um, Staph aureus in particular is one that it comes and goes and it's really hard to get rid of. I think I've only really one time heard of anyone getting completely rid of it. Um, you also, um, and also you, if the cow is in milk, you can do a California mastitis test and then they have uh, Dr. Naylor's little papers now that you can squirt milk on and it will automatically you know, tell you if the cow has high somatic cell counts, what it's called. But you also can take samples from each quarter and you can send them to a university or to a place like in Texas, in Stephenville, Texas, they have labs. But that would be extremely important. Now, if the cow is dry and you're waiting for a calf, you're just going to have to trust the person selling you the cow. Okay, also good udder attachment is important. That is the fore udder and the hind um, udder. You wanna make sure that the udder is not pendulous. Um, that is when it's below the hocks or, because as the cow ages, you know, it could be very close to the ground and she probably could step on it when she's getting up. So. Those are just little things that you want to pay attention to. You also want to make sure that the teats are long enough. If you plan to hand milk, if you plan to machine milk, then shorter teats are okay. They've actually, uh, when they, they breed, um, that's a characteristic that they breed for in dairy animals. So the milking machines um, work really well. We hand milk, so teat length is very important. And I have a really good article that I can link below that you can look at about all about teat, teat lengths, which way they're pointing. Um, so something to keep in mind. As Mr. Roofer is milking Heidi, I want to point out the teat length of her front and rear teats. They are easy to hand milk. Miss Roofer has very large hands and her milk stream is very strong. So that is definitely a positive attribute for hand milking. Also, um, and Heidi is an excellent keeper. She's nursing a large calf and she is maintaining body condition very well. Now, Nutmeg, the darker cow that I milk most of the time in the videos, she is a finer bone cow. She doesn't hold her condition as well as Heidi. Her teats are smaller and her milk stream is not as um, large. But the good part is as she ages, her teats are less likely to drip milk, which means less likely to invite mastitis. When always when you strain your milk, always check your filter because that can give you a clue if your cow has mastitis. And another little tip is when your milk is frothy and lot foamy, that is usually a good sign that the milk is healthy and clean. If it is flat, that can mean mastitis. Number five is genetics. 
Now I have several videos about, uh, I have one about choosing a bull for your, for your dairy cow and how you need to understand the genetics from both parents so you can understand the offspring. Uh, so some factors if you plan to make cheese that you might be concerned is, you've probably heard the term A2A2. It's called A2A2 beta casein. So you might want to research and be very educated if that's important to you. My cows are all A2A2. Um, you can send uh, samples off to find out. And I have um, places on videos and on my blog where you can find out where to send that to. So A2A2, the second one is BB Kappa casein. It's the cheese yield gene. So it can make the milk clot 25% faster and it can yield up to 10% 10, 10 more cheese. So that is pretty significant. Actually, I know I can tell from cheese making which of my cows are BB Kappa casein because I just cannot use very much rennet and I get a ton of cheese. Okay, the third gene is beta lactoglobulin. It's the butterfat gene. So if you wanna make butter, you might wanna know that. Ben Gottschall, which uh, his website is Holt Creek Jerseys. He's known as uh, having grass-fed genetics. He, you can go to his blog and you can read all about this. The other genetic factor, which I focused on in the video, is horned or polled. So I use a Punnett square, that's what it's called, and it'll help you determine if the offspring will be polled or horned. And so we have a blog, we have a really good video and we will have a blog post soon about that. But that's important. I actually just recently, I have a whole video about um, if you should, you know, dehorn calves. And now that I'm older, I can see that, and I have a grandchild, grandchildren, that it is important. So I have found, you know, that when they're just um, two weeks old, they, I call the vet and have them dehorned. But anyway, go back and look at that video and learn all about that. So those are some important um, genetics that you want to address. Number six is physical confirmation. So is the cow that you're looking at, is she fine boned? Is she fleshy? Does she have strong feet and legs? Um, is she the old fashioned Jersey, like some of mine that are, um, you know, a little heavier duty and are horned or the, a New Zealand style or just a modern registered style of Jersey. They put all their inputs into milk production and very little into body condition, which my cows are grass fed genetics and they maintain a good body condition on grass. But if that's important to you, you know, you want to pick the right style of jersey. Number seven, grass fed or grain fed. Now I have a blog post all about feeding dairy cows and a YouTube video. So you want to go back and read and watch those. Depending on the cow's genetics, it does factor in and some environmental factors if your cow is going to need grain or can just graze. Um, this is something I have spent, I'm, I'm whole, went through holistic management training, which is at the Allen Savory um, principles. So I am all in on grass fed. My beef cattle are 100% grass fed, but I do after all these years of keeping dairy cows, there are some, some instances and some genetics that I do believe that a dairy cow needs grain. And it is important. I've actually seen some people's cows die over this. So ask me any questions below. Um, if, you, 
if you want to know, you know, more about this. So, if you do feed grain, there is a way of doing that, which I soak my grain and I only per to I only feed a certain percent of their body weight on cows that I feel like that need it. Okay, number eight is milk production. Are you wanting a cow that produces six gallons a day? Are you wanting a cow that's more moderate? Two to three gallons a day. My cows produce a more moderate amount of milk because they use their inputs for body condition. But you know, if you're wanting six gallons and you're wanting to feed a dairy ration and that's what you want, then you need to be informed up front. Number nine, now this is very important for us milkmaids and people that love to milk cows is their personality and temperament. Now, if you're a first time milker, you might want to get a really gentle cow that it has a laid back personality. And jerseys have a big personality. They're actually a lot of fun and they're actually the smartest bovine and they can learn after teaching them just something four or five times. So, you know, it's a whole lot of fun and you might, you know, that might be a factor or something that influences your decision. Okay, number 10. Has your cow, has this cow been trained for stanchion milking? Is she halter trained? Is she used to being hand milked or machine milked? These are questions that you need to ask the person selling you the cow. I hope that these 10 tips will help you in your journey and in your search to find the perfect dairy cow for your farm. And it is my favorite thing. I absolutely just, I was so excited to make this video for you. I can't, can't even tell you that how much joy dairy cows have brought to my life and food security. But, I also feel like that bovine health is the most important thing. If she has been exposed to, you know, some, you know, herds that might have yonis or bovine leukosis, I feel, you know, that, that it's better to, you know, to make sure that you have a tested clean cow because we want to serve our families the cleanest raw milk possible. Buying a dairy cow is a very important decision for your family. It is something that you will deal with every day and it will impact your lifestyle. So you want to make sure when you are on your journey to buying and looking for her that you are equipped with the right information and, and have studied and are very knowledgeable about what you're looking for. You want to, I wouldn't say be scared or beware, but you just want to be very informed. And another place that I think is a good resource for finding, it about, finding out about the family dairy cow is the website keepingafamilycow.com. It is, has tons of people that milk and lots of information that will help you. So that is a good place to start. And there's the lady that created that um, website also has a wonderful book and it is uh, called Keeping the Family Cow. And I would say over 20 years, I probably reread it twice a year. So there's some great information for you to begin your search about family milk cows. I will leave a link to the book, Keeping the Family Cow, below in the description box. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel and watch all our videos about the family milk cow. From our Texas Hill Country Farmstead to you, have a blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.